This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by the diva, Gary Coley. Gary, it's been a while. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, bro. Yeah, I'm good. I'm over in Liverpool. I'm in deep, deep in the training camp again. So uh, normal service has resumed, man. And uh, I'm excited, yeah. Let's let's roll it the whole way way back. I haven't spoke to you since that defeat. Look, things didn't go your way. We, we know that. What, what actually went wrong that night for you? Do you know what? I've just been actually speaking to uh, a couple of people this week about it and um, I think that one of the major things that went wrong was there was a lot of there was a lot of emphasis placed on Gary Cully becoming a superstar and this is his coming out party and um, the celebrations and what was next and the walkout and this and that and the big show and being back in Dublin for the first time and um, it kind of, I took my eye off the ball a little bit. Usually, I'm, uh, I'm locked into an opponent, and um, I really, really want to, in a kind of weird, sadistic way, put put pain on somebody, and that's what we're about. It's the hurt business, and and uh, that's the mode I get into. I get into war mode, and it was kind of missing from that last fight. It was more of a, it was more of a party and a celebration more so than anything else, I suppose, and. Uh, I kind of took my eye off the ball a little bit as well as that then we got Jose Felix at short notice, no excuses, but I like to, like I said, zone in on an opponent for a couple of weeks, six, eight weeks where you know who you're fighting, you can get to a game plan, you can kind of make it a little bit personal in your head, but Jose Felix come in two, three weeks notice, look, he, he come in at short notice as well, so I can't, uh, I can't, I'm not using that as an excuse, but just I, I like to have a, I like to have somebody in mind for a couple of weeks. So he come in at short notice. Um and yeah, man, like I said, I think I took took my eye off the ball a little bit, didn't show him enough respect and um yeah, I paid the ultimate price for it. But look, I, I feel like I've learned a lesson from it. I'm in Liverpool now. I've uh, I've relocated my training, relocated my team and um yeah, man, everything's good again. I've got that bit between my teeth of the fire burning in the belly again. So I'm looking forward to going again and making it right. What did you learn from that defeat? You know, a lot's been made of whenever someone loses like that, they learn a lot. What have you learned from that defeat? I think that life doesn't end after a defeat. Um, and everybody wakes up on Monday morning and doesn't give a shit, to be honest. Um, same as the wins, to be honest. And I've kind of always been aware of that, that um, this career is short-lived and we're... Uh, we're in the spotlight for a certain amount of time, but you, you take a loss and you kind of, it's the business of boxing, isn't it? People don't really, uh, people just kind of write you off. Oh yeah. Hype job, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And the week, the week before I couldn't, I couldn't actually get a fighter. Like I said, two weeks before I couldn't get an opponent because nobody wanted to know because everybody was shitting themselves because I'd been on a knockout run of, of five knockouts and, and been running through everybody and then all of a sudden you take a loss and people kind of write you off and think you're vulnerable and nah he's not what we thought he was and stuff like that so um it's a learning game man it's a, it's a bit it's a it's a brutal sport these things can happen at, at at the high levels you know um if you don't get it right and uh you make mistakes you don't get a chance to make many mistakes and you pay the price and like I said I paid the ultimate price um, I got in with a puncher. I didn't show him enough respect, and um, took my eye off the ball. Like I said, I paid the price, and uh, like I said, I've 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 learned my lesson, and uh, it won't happen again. You can you can bet your money on that. Well, first I want to just touch on something. I think that maybe people didn't realize how good Jose Felix is either. So you need to get a bit of respect from that because people maybe think that Jose Felix was just a a walkover opponent. He was far from it. This guy was top ranks main prospect at one point so he yeah. came with a bit between his teeth and I think maybe people didn't realise how good he was going to be you are levels above Jose Felix and I think you know that yourself but on that night it just didn't go your way so with that type of opponent is that something you want to put to bed and put right at some point and get that revenge or have you put that chapter to bed for now yeah I would love to Um, at some point I think that's more so my pride and my ego though shouting and screaming that I, he's got the he's got one up on me so I want to make that right but um, I think Jose Felix's career now is nearly going to be defined off being the guy who beat Gary Cully so 
Um, if that's his, if that's what he 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 finishes boxing with and that's what his claim to fame is, then so be it. Like, um, but if I go on to to win world titles like I expect to do and and do what I expect to do in the sport, um, it is something that I'd like to revisit and that that I that I'd like to uh that I'd like to get back for sure. But my ultimate goal in this game is to become a world champion. Um, I want to become a world champion. It's my it's been my dream since I'm a kid. I think I'm good enough to do it. So um, that's my ultimate goal. Obviously, Jose Felix has one up on me. Um, I'd love to get it back at some stage in my career. But like I said, I want to become a world champion. And um, my full focus is on getting in the right fights to become a world champion and getting in them positions. You've changed training teams like you alluded to. Do you believe you needed this change to further your career and are things still amicable with Pete? Yeah, defo. Um, for me anyway, I've I've always said I've I've mad respect for Pete. Um, got lots of love for Pete. We've been we've been had a had a fighter coach relationship for for five plus years. So um, we've built a relationship and and built a friendship off that as well. You know, so for me, it's a uh, we're we're still amicable amicable for sure. I haven't spoke to him much since. Um, obviously just been busy. He's been busy with the lads, but. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's just something that that I needed to to do to for myself. It wasn't anything got to do with um, got to do with Pete or a problem with Dublin or a problem with with training in at home. It was just something that I felt felt like I needed to get up, get outside my comfort zone, um, test myself, challenge myself. When I was thinking about coming over to Liverpool, I was getting a little bit nervous and and stuff like that. So it was kind of a reason for me to go. Now nah, this is what you need to do. I need to get up and get outside your comfort zone, freshen things up. And I definitely feel like I've made the right decision. So, um, yeah, man, things still amicable with Pete, of course. I'll always have respect and love for Pete. He's a great coach. Um, But, yeah, it's just something that I need to do for myself. It's a short career and uh, I wanted to make the most of it, you know. What's it been like being around Joe McNally? He's got a great stable building there. You've got yourself, you've got Keevan and Jarko, Liam Smith in the gym, obviously, Shannon Courtney. What's it like being in and around that environment? You know, the first week I went in the gym, I left and just come over to meet meet Joe and do a couple of sessions and did some pads. And I remember coming over on a Wednesday and leaving on a Friday. So I just did two days to begin with. And uh, I left and went home and was like, I, I, I felt like I'd been in the Rotunda before. Um, and I know that Liverpool, Liverpool, Dublin, Irish connection is there. And lots of, uh, there's lots of Irish over in Liverpool. Everybody's surname's Irish. Everybody's only maybe a generation or two away from actually being Irish. So, um, I felt at home there straight away and I still do feel at home. The lads took me in. The lads are all uh, all deadly lads in the gym as well. So getting a bit of a slagging due to the due to the Irish accent, obviously. But uh, other than that, other than that, things all things are all good. Talk to me a bit about this fight on Kitty Taylor's undercard. Obviously, this is uh, another massive night in your career. Now we can say it is the biggest night of your career because it's the comeback, it's the Diva 2.0. By the time this interview comes out, your opponent will probably be announced. Do you want to tell us a bit about your opponent? Well, I've not got an opponent confirmed yet, so I'm hoping it's confirmed and announced by Monday, but I don't want to actually speak too much on it at the moment because I'd like to get it over the line first. Um, But yeah, another big fight, hopefully. Um, And another big platform, hopefully co-main event if we get the opponent that that's going to be locked in and um yeah it's going to be it's going to be a big fight like i said co-main event um big show big platform and uh, i'm looking forward to putting on a show and, and showing everybody the real gary cully um and, and what i can really do there was a lot of pressure on your shoulders last time gary and i think you'll admit that now looking back that you had the the hopes of dublin kind of raining on you as well as katie but yourself too you had your best friend Dan on that stage. Where will it be the same again this time around? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I just texted him last week, and uh, we've been back and forth a little bit. So whether it's the same song or not, we might change it up. But um, yeah, we're we're both Sarto heads, Sarto true and true. That's where we grew up, born and bred. So uh, yeah, we've got to represent and uh, show out on the night as well. So yeah, Defo he did his part the last time, and uh, I slipped up a little bit, but. This time will be with two point oh will will definitely be uh will make it right for sure. How big is the comeback gonna be? You know, are we gonna see you come through this with a dominating performance? Irish boxing kind of needs a 
uh, a flame reignited now because Katie lost, you lost, Mick lost all within a few weeks and you're all coming back within two weeks of each other. We, we really need to see this again for Irish boxing. Yeah, for sure. Um, Irish boxing's waiting on that. I, I feel that that next trailblazer, obviously Katie's been the one for the last number of years. Um, Mick's obviously been doing his thing as well, but there was a big opportunity for me there in, in Dublin in May and um, like I said, I slipped up and and uh, got it wrong, but I've got that opportunity again, um, and and that's a blessing in itself that it didn't go to plan, but I've got it again, and I can make it right, and um, I've got the opportunity to make it right, and yeah, um, full focus is on is on doing that, putting in a dominating performance. I'm always in exciting fights. I've got an exciting style, and um, yeah, I believe I'm gonna show up in Dublin, make it right, put in a big performance, and uh, be that next star in 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 Dublin and in Irish boxing. What does the next 12 to 18 months look like for Gary Colley? And will, will we see you maybe move up on weight? Is that something that's crossed your mind also? Say that again. Sorry, bro, you broke up there. What does the next 12 to 18 months look like for Gary Colley? And will we see you maybe move up weight again? Um, I don't think I'll move up weight in the next 12 to 18 months. I'd like to, I'd like to, uh, I've always said I'd like to win a world title at lightweight. And that, that plan remains the same way. Uh, my world title aspirations remain at lightweight. Um, I'd like to get this this next fight, get a a big performance, a big win, um, back in Dublin and move on to hopefully the EBU European title after that. Around maybe, let's say Paddy's Day in Dublin. Let's do it on Paddy's Day in Dublin. It's a perfect time because fighting in November, obviously, um, and then come back and do do the the EBU title in in March and then push on to to world rankings again, top 10 opponents and uh, start closing in on a world title shot before the end of, of 2024. Well, Gary Colley, it's a pleasure having you on IFL TV. Looking forward to the comeback. Looking forward to seeing what you can produce on November 25th and uh, really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate your time as well as always.